This episode of the podcast is brought to you by our partner, Audible. Yes, it is. So we are partnered with Audible. That means that if you are looking just to check it out, uh, you don't want to put your card in and just take, take the dive. You can get 30 days for free on us. If you go to audibletrial.com slash J-A-T-G or click the link down below. Uh, you'll be taken there. You can sign up uh, for 30 days for free and just test it out. Like there's a lot of stuff on there that you can get for free, a lot of Audible exclusives. Uh, but what I really like about Audible is that out of the hundreds and thousands of audiobooks that they have, if you decide to purchase something, that is yours forever. Like if you decide not to carry on your subscription or you want to take a break or whatever it is, you can always go back and listen to that book whenever you want through the app on the internet. doesn't matter because it's yours. So once again, you can get that for 30 days for free on us. If you go to audibletrial.com slash J-A-T-G. <music> doing that little loading bar so i don't know if we're actually live or not but let's say we are live mrs truly we're here yeah just we're hold here. your horses yeah just time out a little bit we god just... mom i'm on my way <laughs> exactly <laughs> welcome to another fun filled episode of johnny and the greg and i think for some reason i don't have a lot planned but i think it's going to be a goofy one i don't know why i just do Curry. You know, I want to watch that show called Team or Seal Team with David Boreanaz on CBS. Oh, you mean like yeah. the actual drama? Yeah, like everybody scripted. from I think fifty-five and over love it. Um, I've I've seen it. I've seen episodes of it. It it seems like a fine yeah show. I mean, it's so as, as I'm looking at, I'm trying to find it on Hulu, <clears throat> and I go. My God, Ursula! I said, Dave, David Bore, thats the career you want—is David Borealis. You yeah. want that career? That dude is the definition of a working actor. Yes, like, like and, and, and it's solid stuff. Like it's yep. it's. He went from Buffy to Angel, and I, now he sprinkle in all these little one-off movie roles or yeah. other TV episodes and stuff like that. But man, he's consistently worked yep. since we've seen him since like Buffy. Yeah 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 and what? so do, listen do you know anything about this guy like do you know if he's super nice or does he just have a great agent how does this guy just or is uh, it both? Like, you know what be I, good to work with I, I gotta say i don't know much about him like okay. like either like in his personal life or or anything, anything like that he, he made he made it through the um oh the joss whedon yes stuff, mess. like without comment with and and relatively unscathed maybe but but Whedon did like really well he, he did go after some guys like i j uh james masters has a, a story over joss yes. whedon, like put him you know, almost throat, beat him like, up yeah up against a wall yeah threatened him but but Boreanaz does. I've never heard a story like that from him. And now maybe I, I'm not looking for a story like that from him. Like I'm not Googling yeah. for it, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he did. Let's, let's look up his credits, but uh, that oh, I already did show. it. There's, there's so much that I didn't even know about. <clears throat> and I'm talking about, these are one-off things. Like he was on, he was like probably victim number two on law and order or something like that. You know? Okay. He's, he's, he never stops. So I just, I just always wondered, I never hear anything bad. He's never in, I've never seen a, or heard, Hey, that David guy, he went off on stage one day or, you know, just, I've never right. heard anything about the guy, but all I've Nothing heard is negative, he's constant. Yeah. yeah. He's constantly working. He's constantly I mean, working. So if you first guys, if you, if you want to be a movie star, out there, <clears throat> this is the career you get. He was in best of the best too. <laughs> yeah. As a as a as a parking valet. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, and that that was in 93. Buffy came out in 98. Nine, 99. 
Oh, was it? 99? Yeah. I, I, the reason I know that is I just, oh, looked, yeah, there is. I just yeah. looked it up today. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, oh, I remember the Crow movie he did. That was a, a terrible, terrible Crow movie. Yeah. Did, wasn't he in My Valentine? <clears throat> Another slasher movie. Was it? I, he he made that like early nineties uh, round of like the it rest feels of like that crew. Everybody from the WB had made a jump to some horror movie. Valentine was the name of it. That yeah. was it. Yeah. Yes, yes. But I really liked um, his show Angel. Like I like I almost like that more than Buffy. Dude, because that's it, what it, you and I watched in our room. We did. Yeah. Well, we watched both, but but we yeah. we I mean. Angel was like a, a a private eye show with the supernatural thrown in. Yeah, I, I've always dug that kind of setup. So yeah. it was cool. Yeah, actually, guys, cool. if you want to know how crazy the Greg and I got back then, we were taking shots of tequila rose. Oh my god! <laughs> so <bad>. watching that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, god, my brother, thought... my brother gave me a bottle of that one Christmas, and it was like we. It was just before spring break. Yeah. And I remember they made us unplug our fridge when we left for oh, spring yeah. break. Yeah, you're right. So, so like we had to clean it out. Yeah. Yeah. We had to clean it out. Like you couldn't leave anything in there because they didn't want all those electronics running for no reason when no one was there. So they're like, hey, we'll save a couple bucks where the kids are gone and make it. So we had to plug it. And I'm like, we got to drink this stuff because it was. It's like Pepto Bismol. I don't know if there was dairy in it. Or it what was Pepto Bismol thick. Yeah, and pink. It, it didn't taste that bad. But no, we were drinking no, I, an entire bottle of it. Oh, you and I were just Christ. going back and forth, watching, <sighs> watching TV and playing video games. And then my wife, who was my fiance at the time, I remember she walked in. She's like, "What are you guys doing?" We're like, <laughs> "Yeah, nothing." Yeah. Oh, it was ridiculous. There's nothing better when you're that age and you feel like. You have no other choice but to drink all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like well, well, this yeah. was a gift. We can't <laughs> it's a, waste it. What do you what do you want to do? Yeah, that's ridiculous. And to a like point now, break. now if somebody's like, uh, hey, we got um, the fridge, we're gonna do those all this alcohol, throw it out. I don't care. Like uh, really? Yeah, yes, yes. But at the same time, like if I'm at a bar. And someone buys me a shot, like oh no, like I see a group of you. Now. I I I don't. I feel obligated. I know you do. I do. Yeah, you I do. feel like hey, someone's some someone's spent money to buy me a shot. I feel I don't want to say responsible, but like you want to like, be polite. Wanna I want to be polite. Like, and I don't know if that's the Wisconsinite in me. Like, we don't turn down liquor. I mean, it's not that but i've there are some shots that i will say no like if someone offers me hey we're gonna do malort no thank you what the like what's malort malort is a liquor that comes from minnesota i believe and it is so foul tasting like oh, yeah? I, meanwhile and, and on the other side of things like if someone offers me jaeger i'm like okay we can, we can do jaegermeister that's fine like straight jaeger okay that's, really yeah, yeah, I I don't have. Yeah, I'm not a Jaeger bomb guy. I don't like any of that shit. I mean, I, I don't like shots. I'm not a I, fan. I, of I it. like it, but well, and you you introduced me to a shot probably two decades ago, um, the redheaded slut, which has Jaeger in it. Um, I like those, but even when you and I were out and you said, "Here, this is a drink that I think you'll like," it was poured like as a drink, like as a cocktail. oh yeah yeah you're right yeah. And now people are like, no, that's a shot. I'm like, really? Because I remember the first couple times I had it. It was in like a scotch glass. And yeah. they're like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. No, yeah, that's and what happened. <laughs> they're like, and you drank it? I'm like, yeah, all of it. <laughs> yeah. But not in one shot, right? No, I, I, no, yeah, you I, just I, sipped it throughout the night. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was gone pretty quick because those things are damn tasty. Those but... are crazy days, if you think of it. Like there was yeah. every excuse to go out at night and drink. In college, yeah. I don't know if it's like that anymore. I really don't. I don't know if it's like that. I'm. Sh I want to feel like you know there has to be. It's has. There to is. Be. There is because like where where the bars that I hang out in now. Yeah. Which is like maybe one Saturday night a yes. month where we go out and do a bar thing or do a little bar crawl. There's 
kind of three that we tend to hit up. One of them's got really great music and a great, it's a great summer bar because the the deck area is really cool and we like to sit out there. Um, but I was there the last week before all the kids went back to college. Like I went okay. out with, uh, went with my buddy, Dan, he called me up. He's like, we're going out for cocktails or it's just him and another guy. He's like, you want to meet us out? Sure. I can do that. And so he's like, I said, I'll meet you at local. And I walk in and it's this sea of 20 year olds. No. Oh, and, and like what one guy's using his passport as is at, to show that he's 21 because he lost his wallet or he lost his driver's license. So he's, he's walking around with his passport. I'm like, what is this guy doing with his passport? So then I start to make fun of him and his friends are like, he lost his ID. And I'm like, then stay home. Like, what do you care? Like your passport no, is no, like, you can't stay home. If I know. And they're and I'm like, <laughs> like, what are you doing with your passport? Out? Someone's no. going to kick the shit out of you and steal your passport. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it was just like this sea of 20 somethings. And I, I mean, my buddy sat, at a table and just observed i mean it was like a wildlife show you're just watching the mating habits of the american 20 something and oh yeah yeah and it's just like look at this kid over here yeah no this isn't gonna work and it's just it's so different and it's different yeah it's different it's familiar and it's also scary because if you and i were ever if you and I ever had bad luck to where we would have to be out in the dating pool again. Oh, it's terrible. Oh my God. I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do. I probably wouldn't do. I I'd, just, be, I'd be fine without. Well, like, that's it. I'm not doing this. I think, honestly, we might do pretty well in, in the idea that we're now kind of old fashioned. Like, yeah, in that, okay. like, we're. If okay, just like you said, the the, the yeah. terrible bad luck of having to be in the dating pool again. Yes. Um, which I know for both of us was means like we're we're widowed. Like that's the bad luck that would have to happen. Right. And it's it's now like we're not meeting a girl, and then on the third text, it's a dick pic because we're like no right yes I so know. Yeah. so in that you sense think of like, somebody at our age out in the dating pool now gets dick pics yes oh yeah wait we talked yeah. to someone that said that yes we have yes, yes. we've yes. had conversations with yes. with friends that are our age that yes. are single yeah. and they're like yeah it's it's bad that it nuts. is that bad right Okay, I yeah, um, yeah. So I hear what you're saying. We would come across as almost, oh my god, they're normal. Yeah, yeah. Or they're nice, or you know, yeah, it, and, and just, you know, plenty of female. Or their there. phone, or they're not in their phone instead of like right here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That I I think would make a be a difference maker from what I've observed, you know, a couple months ago. Yeah. Speaking of uh, being right here, did you um? So some big corporations announced, I think, at the beginning of this year, and they're getting a lot of pushback. The whole idea of they want people to come back to office. They want people to come back oh, to yeah. the office, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the big ones, I I think it was Disney, when the new CEO took over. What was his name? Not the guy you hate. Not the guy you hate. The other guy that came back. But Michael Eisner. When yes, yeah. One of his first things was he wanted to see everybody back. back. Yeah. Right. A lot of people were getting upset with that. We all got comfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, didn't you say your company was playing with the idea of a four day week? Four day work week. Yeah. Yeah. That that concept has been floated. I don't know how far up the chain. It yeah. went, yeah. but I, I'm on a people and culture team. And so like, it was, it was talked about, Hey, has anybody had experience? Anybody have reactions? What do you think about this? You know, yeah. what have you read? So yeah, I, I was part of a very early discussion and I haven't heard about it since then, but what, what would you like to know? Um, What do you think about it? Cause there's a lot that can actually go into it. If mm-hmm. you went as a whole, like, what does right. a four day work week actually entail? Does it entail ten hour days? Does there's, it include 
cutting back your pay so you're getting paid for no definitely not that they can't no 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 one would be up for that any any <laughs> concept that i've heard of that is certainly not a part of it yeah because you, um, you can't do that <clears throat> yeah cutting pay cutting benefits is not not a part of that equation at all um right. what i have seen so it, it kind of depends on the business you're in. Right. But we've heard, I mean, I've heard of like manufacturing places that will say, oh yeah, if you work four tens, you're good. Like, yes, <clears throat> I could technically do it with my job. I just yeah. don't choose to. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're, and that's, that's kind of what I've heard is that some people are like, well, you can choose to do that in your position. Just let your supervisor know that that's what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, like I said, in some manufacturing jobs where they kind of rely on who's going to be there, the what they're weighing out is what's the production we can get out in four tens, and then what are the savings of like shutting the plant down for an extra day of the week? An extra day, okay. So does that outweigh our production? <clears throat> it, it's the whole like in going outgoing. Like, what, yeah, can, can we get it done? In my in my uh, job where everybody's kind of more office based and or and whether you're uh overseas in an actual office building or if you're uh in this part of the world where we're right. all working from home um it i think the discussion is think about your typical week you know if we were to go to a 4 day work week can you can you still produce the same amount and it would be something that would be universal. Like it would be, we're all, should, we're working Monday through Thursday and then everybody gets Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Right. Um, and I think that was kind of more the, uh, what people were going towards because on a lot of Fridays, a lot of offices, a lot of people like that, or a lot of people, those, um, a lot of our reps, clients, customers, like they're knocking off early on a Friday anyway. Yeah. Like they're two o'clock on a Friday. They're like, Hey, we're shutting the office down. Go home, everybody. Or people just check out at that point because they got stuff to do. So like by two or three, like a lot of their offices are empty. Okay. So they're like, well, you know, if we were to take Fridays off or give you Fridays off, is that going to be a big deal? And a lot of people were like, no, we're mostly just tying up the, our loose ends for the week on a Friday. Or putting whatever is coming on your desk, you're putting yeah, off put, until Monday. Yeah, putting the finishing touches on. But would for the Thursday turn into a Friday? I don't. And, and that's the big question. That is the right? big question. Like, does do people on Thursday start being like, well, it's almost two o'clock? Initially, what I've heard is the answer is no. Okay. It doesn't it doesn't turn into that right away? But ten years down the road, maybe. I don't know. There's no yeah. studies up out there that far yet yeah. that can bring that data in because yeah if you make thursday the new friday when does when does the oh nope we're working our asses off monday through thursday yeah when does that start to get a little bit more right I don't, I don't know the answer yeah yeah i um i think it i think it's human nature i so saw i think it would just naturally happen um where yeah. thursday would become the new friday where you're like well i'll just put it off to monday yeah, yeah <laughs> maybe yeah I remember my last, the last two semesters, maybe three, no, it was two, uh, of college when I was on campus and had classes, so I wasn't student teaching. It was, I had, I had classes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That was it. Yeah. I didn't have, I didn't have any Monday classes. That was classes. like the plan. I didn't have any Friday classes. Right. So it would have been very easy for me. Yeah. To do that. No, oh, my, my work week is three days. Yeah. Like that's, that's when I'm doing stuff. And then Monday and Friday or you know, whatever. Yeah. But I knew that wasn't going to work for me uh, at that point in my life. So um, it, it would have been too much, too much downtime and not enough work time. Okay. So what I did is that I made Mondays and Fridays, my work days, um, because on campus, the job I had, uh, I made the schedule. So I said, okay, I'm going to work like 
all day Monday, all day Friday. So yeah. I was still, I still had to go to campus. Still had to get up. Still had to I move. Still had, still had to do I still something. had to yeah. do stuff. Yeah. And then those days became like my, my work days, like my paper writing days. And because at that point in my, in my collegiate career, it was just, I didn't have tests anymore. Yeah. It was all, it was all projects and papers. Yeah. And those became like, oh, okay, I need to slam out some papers this week. I'm going to get it done on those days. Yeah. I think it's good to keep the stone rolling down the hill. Yeah. I think that's, um, I think that's good. But also speaking of like, I, I don't know how we, my fault we transitioned to the four day work week, but I wanted to get back to the whole idea of coming back to work, coming back to work. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so, Milwaukee's having the same issue. The last thing I saw was like downtown Chicago, those businesses totaled up. were losing like a billion dollars a year in revenue because people like those office buildings were all were empty. Like those downtown restaurants, those yeah. downtown coffee shops, all those places that yes. rely on those commuters to come in. Correct. We're like, we're suffering down here because no one's here. Yeah. It's like a fragile ecosystem, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, how do you feel about it? Cause someone that works from home like you, uh-huh. Yep. And you are an actual, you are a um, people person. Like you, you yeah. like to talk, you like to, yep. so how do you like where you're at now um, versus having to go somewhere? I'm sure there are some there, pros to not going it, it's, somewhere. It's all pros and cons. Like, yes. like my, like my daily schedule uh-huh. is, and you've, we've talked about this before. I don't get enough sleep because I want to stay up and spend time with my wife. Right. So like we stay up late and like if when I had to be up at like six or seven, depending on which job I had, um, the office job I had when we came home, I, I was up at seven out the door by seven twenty, so that I could be in my cubicle by like eight o'clock. Like that was the, the okay. accepted time to be at work. No one was really like, well, some people like the assholes in the office were keeping their own track, but like my boss, I beat my boss to work like every day. So yeah. okay. um, no one was keeping track in that manner. Uh, and I wasn't like punching a clock or anything. Um, so, and kind of when everything went to remote, it was a little bit easier because I mean, my schedule didn't change. So yeah. I was getting more sleep because I could, you know, if I was expected to be at my desk and logged on by eight, I was woke up like, at seven 50. I woke up at seven 50. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put my glasses on, you know, yeah. Went downstairs, grabbed the toast, come to my desk. Yeah. And I'm working. Yes. And, so and that, yeah, that's definitely a plus. Yeah. And that yeah. hasn't changed. Like that's, that's kind of my schedule now um, yeah. is I'm, I, I sleep in until uh, or right around like my, my alarm goes off at seven 30. Right. And I, and I hit snooze a couple of times until right. I go, Nope, here we go. Time to get up. And here we go. I understand the appeal. If you ask my wife, she'd rather work from home the rest of her life. Yeah. Because my, my wife is not a people person while she's working. Right. So like when she works, it's look, I want to get this done. Mm -hmm. So that I can do the things I want to do, like spend time with family or whatever, whatever. Um, she's when we go out, she's very people friendly. But when she is mm -hmm. working and people come up to her, she's like, Why are you talking yep. to me? Yeah. In the zone. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. So she's so I can see why when it comes to work, she doesn't want to go anywhere because half the time she's putting out fires. Mm -hmm. And there's always, I guess there's people in her work where they need to sit down and talk. And she's yeah. like, no, 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 I got to do this. Yep. Yep. You know, so I, I do miss a little bit of the camaraderie of right. having like work friends. Yes. Um, Cause I always had like, you, you know, you've got your people, and uh -huh. your, your work friends that you yeah, would have, you would have lunch with and things like yeah. that. Um, And my last job that really started to decrease as they started to decentralize a lot of things. So the people that were on the same floor as me, yeah. Like we weren't hanging out. Uh, know, I was eating at my desk, you know. Yeah. Watching ESPN 
or, or something right. else during my lunchtime. Or I was, if the weather was nice, it was, you know, hey, I'll eat and work and I'll take this, you know, 30 minutes to just go outside for yeah. a little bit because we had like some trails and stuff around the office. But um, so I do miss the work friend thing, but that was kind of like a slow fade. Yeah. Um, and being that Zoom being what it is and kind of the, I've been able to adjust to where like my Slack channel, Slack is a program where you use for like instant messaging and it's a work messaging program. Um, but there are channels on Slack that are just fun channels where it's like, hey, here's the channel where we talk about what we're reading. Here's the channel where we talk about what we're watching. Here's the music channel. I mean, you, oh, so it's like so, an interactive it's, party line. Do you, do you remember chat rooms back in yeah, the day? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're they're essentially like chat rooms. OK, but there was but, Zoom, right? You see people. But then I then I have plenty of Zoom meetings during the week because every okay. meeting I have is based on Zoom. Yeah. Um to where you get a little bit like we open every meeting it's not a boom let's get down to business right we there is at least if you're in a 1 hour meeting we're setting aside 15 minutes to just chat and chat and warm up and, to the idea of being yeah on. i mean we're we're you know i'm the only wisconsinite on my team uh yeah. there is one woman up in minnesota she and i compare weather horror stories yes um you know down in texas they've we've got uh a, a group of people down there in the dallas area so they've got their horror stories yeah. that are just different from the most like the upper midwest ones and so you know we and we just take time to to be a group of people working on a team together like yeah. B team so you know have that and it's not structured it's you know Hey, what'd you, what'd you do this weekend? Well, I, I went and saw cocaine bear. Oh, did you really? How was that? I mean, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and then we, and then we get down to work and, um, and that's, that's how we do it. Like they've, there's more and more research on there of how to run successful teams remotely because it's different. Right. But would I go back? It would have to be a real special job for me to, be like, I want to get up and go into an office again. I, I get that. And look, I, I get the I, the comfort. I, I'm one of those people where I know I couldn't, I don't think I could work from home. I think I get way too distracted with other things. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm that guy that needs to go out. But I, I was wondering, I was just wondering if, if it's me that just thinks this, but I feel like going back to work it's important for one reason that I feel like the human species is community driven. Like we're, tri we're, we're tribal, tribal by nature. Yeah. Yes. And so when you start separating us all the time, like oh, yeah. I remember like in the eighties, everybody knew the neighbors and now it's like, unless like, it's very easy to not know your neighbors. I I'm, I'm, people i know don't know who their guy is over here or their guy is over right. here or their guy yeah and i'm shocked by that because oh. i'm like dude like he's right there well like, like you've been you've been to my house I, I yeah i will say i know but i don't i've never met of one neighbors. of your neighbors well no because when you're here it's i'm we're about hosting you but like i know i i know i know that neighbor i know that yeah. one i know that one now the guy over here I've met him. He's nice. I don't know his name. They don't come out of their house too much. I mean, okay. so it's so it's not like yeah. I know all of my neighbors, but like when when those neighborhood events happen, like you you need to bring your daughter up and come to Halloween or out here. Okay. It's a blast. All right. Cool. And and that's like I am known in the neighborhood as the guy that did smoked pork butt last Halloween. Like okay. you like that's how we kind of got to know people. I mean, that's that's how. I don't know. It was just there's a big neighborhood feel around here. Good, but I realize that that's not everywhere. So. Yeah. So yeah. I, so I, it just it it kind of bums me out for you know my daughter's generation that I feel like there's all these problems that are going to happen, and I don't know if that's a generational thing. Like if Mrs. Truly sat there and thought, "Oh my gosh, Dungeons and Dragons, boxers underwear, they're going to hell." Like 
Like, did she think because things were changing because the world changes, whether you like yeah. it or not, right? That they thought, like, I and I and if Mrs. Truly's on right now, so pay attention to. These. I assume, yeah. Okay. Did her parents freak out? And I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not good with ages and generations. But was Elvis her time? Was Elvis? Oh the, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. So uh, were the, her the story. Her, one of the stories, like the Beatles, were her time. And okay. when my when my grandfather dropped off his daughters to go see, I think a, a Hard Day's Night, which is the Beatles movie. Okay. And he's like, "I better not hear about you girls screaming in there when the Beatles come on." <laughs> and they most certainly did. Yeah, of course they would, but sure. that and, and that's my point, though, right? Was it the like, downfall of society when Elvis and the Beatles came? Right. No. Yeah. It, Right, but well, that, yeah. to my grandparents, it was they're like, "What that's, the hell?" Is that's the what I'm home? saying. So I don't yeah. know if I'm getting to that age now, where now I'm a father and I'm looking ahead. And I'm thinking, "Oh my gosh, everybody's going to be in every their phone. They don't know how that. to talk." Yeah, every generation. Has and that. I'm and I'm wondering if I'm starting to pay attention to the whole idea of okay, so nobody knows how to talk. There's this one story that I just heard about this. Uh, this guy invited his grandkids down to Florida. Now they live in the Midwest. Never been to the ocean. Okay, so he goes to Florida and he says the entire car ride down because I came to get him and I drove him down. I thought it'd be this fun summer adventure with my. Oh, sure. They looked at their phones all time and looked at their phones the whole time when they were at the ocean. They looked at their phones the whole time. And he's like, what the hell? Like, what is this? Like, and I was thinking, my God, that's probably going to be. Now a lot they of could have been teenagers, and that's teenagers. You're into your own thing, and mm-hmm. you like it, you know. But it just it every yeah every generation has that. I mean, I've I now officially have three teenagers because my yeah. youngest has crested over to the teens, and they're in their phones a lot. And yeah. there are moments where I just like, hey, you know what? I know you're videotaping or videotaping. I know you're videoing this yes. right now. For you to have, but keep in mind, this has been professionally shot. Like when we were down to Universal, yeah, and like they want to take videos, and like you can find a this professionally yeah. grade YouTube video with this exact same footage, right? Yeah, put your phone down and just experience this, and yeah. you'll, you're you're going to run into that way because you're going. To oh, I'm sure I am in, in a couple months. So when you go like. The best thing I, I think I really saw was when uh, you watched the fireworks show and the projection onto uh, the, the Cin- castle. The castle, yeah. Yeah. Cin- I think it's Cinderella's castle. And when you're watching that and you're going to see everybody, they're going to be. Yeah. And, and they're they're watching that. They're watching the parades. They're watching all of it. They're seeing it through the phone instead of putting the phone down and watching it. Good and, point, uh, Mr. Struley. It, yes. It's the it's the whole, you know, it's the Darth Vader just once let me see you through my own eyes kind of yes, thing. Yes, yes. Unless your kid is actively in there and you're trying to capture the memory for her. Right. Put the that, phone down. Put the phone down. Experience yeah. the fireworks show. Listen to the music. Watch the castle and the animations. Yeah. Because, because that's what you're going to remember. Right. And I, I got to the point because I the first time I saw it, I was there for a conference. And I didn't think my kids were ever going to go to Disney because I didn't okay. have a job that would allow me to take the family yes. on a Disney vacation. Yes. So I'm like, I positioned my phone here uh-huh. and just and just, OK, that's the shot. Yeah. Don't don't move. Right. Or else you're going to ruin your shot. And then I, I tried to watch it. Yes. With my own eyes and then capture it on my phone so that my kids could eventually see it. But then as I started to look around, I saw so many families. Yeah. You know, but here's here's a family of four. So, yeah, and that's a that's a scary point. Each of them there. have their own phone and they're yeah. all they're all taping the same thing. And it's like, guys, you're all you're all getting this. Why yeah. are you all getting this? Yeah. I that's a really good point. Here, here's another great example. I we we went out. Like I said, my daughter's birthday just happened. It was during the week. She had a volleyball game. She had us all their stuff. So we didn't really get to do a lot for her birthday. So right. we did it yesterday. Right. We're like, what do you, Saturday's yours. What do you want to do? I'm gonna go to the mall. I want to get good Asian food. Great. Where do you want to get Asian food? Gave her the choices. She chose PF Chang's. She went for okay Asian food. And we're like, okay, okay, sure. So 
we're there. Food comes out. And for some reason, they all go, we have to take pictures of our food. Okay. I've so I have never understood that, but okay. That's fine. It, it's it's for them. They like, yep, that's fine. Dad, Dad, are you gonna take a picture of your food? Sure. It's it's a it's a dynamite sushi roll. Yeah. You want me to take a picture of that? Okay. So I'm taking a picture. I put my phone down, two other phones, boom, boom, are taking the same picture of my food. I'm like, I already I already took a picture. Yeah. I can send I can send I it can to share you. this to you. And they're <laughs> like, no, we're we're all taking pictures of like okay, like you don't have to do that. I mean, we, yeah. Like, Are you me. not understanding that you're, you're, you're doing the exact same thing yeah. I've already done? Yeah. Yes. And you're wasting time. Yes. And I'm like, I'm interesting. Gonna, no, that's what I eat now. That's a really interesting point. Um, and, and so you're like, you and you and your wife are going to do that. You're going to be like, but we're, we're not, we're not those we're, we're picture taking with us in the picture. We're not really, let's take a picture of the grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. It's let's take a picture of you or us in front of the grand Canyon, but your daughter's going to be doing stuff and you're going to be wanting to take a picture and you're going to look over and your wife's doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Probably your sister too. Yes. And you're going to be like, Oh, we're all doing this. Yes. How about one of us does it? And right. We don't, I mean, you're not capturing, capturing different angles because you're here. Your wife is here. Right. Sister's here. Yeah. (laughs) No, no. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, yeah. That, I I'm glad you talked to me about that. Now I'll be very conscious. I I the reason I got on this is because I was very conscious. Because I I don't know if I told this on the podcast last podcast or if I talked to you about this in general. But I got my back adjusted by a chiropractor. Oh yeah. And just out of curiosity, I think I talked about th- oh, about you, this you offline. The, hunch, the yeah, it was off. Yeah. So I was talking to the my chiropractor and I said. Hey, just out of curiosity, when you get like kids in here, do you what kind of are you getting problems with like because they're looking at their phones? And he's like, Johnny, you won't believe it. There are I have like 13 or 14 year olds who have arthritic necks already because they're constantly down like this looking at their phone. And he it 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 scared me. He's like, dude, by the time he goes, by the time they get to 60, they won't be able to lift their neck up. They yeah. won't be able to do it. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's right. So it's like I'm on this kick now of like, you know, if I don't have to like me, I'm already grown. It's already there. like I'm not going to my youth was spent climbing trees and stuff. I'm not my my I don't feel like my life was this, you right. know, so um, but like Gwen, I, I'm going to be really, really cautious about that. I'm going to be the dad that's, that's like, don't. What is it? Don't uh, I used to get yelled all, all the time. Don't stand so close to the TV. Yeah, that was my dad <clears throat> that, that to me all the time, which was totally so, disproven, by the way. Which I it was totally hilarious. disproven. Yep, totally. Um, I it is it's tough with with kids because the pressure for them to get their own device is mm-hmm. big. Yep, and, and it's not just like pressure from their friends. It's like, oh, you don't have a phone yet. That is not the pressure. The pressure is when you have them signed up for different things and I have to drop you here and then we're going to pick you up here or we have that like, or just know it. Like they need to know what the family calendar is. All of that is done online now. So they, they need a device to just kind of keep up with the world. So that's where you've got to either. One of the worst things I ever did is get my kids iPhones because if they have an Android phone, Google provides parental controls yeah. for to shut down the phone, to shut down certain programs. I mean, or certain apps. Like it iPhone gives doesn't. Not that that's I. A, that's a fucking shame. Not that I found it, or if it's like you have to have an iPhone too to be able to participate. Yeah. And I don't, and I don't want an iPhone. I want to stick with my Android phone. Yeah. Um. I think. I don't know if anybody's got iPhones on and you're, uh, you know, I think, I think Marshall's on there. I think he's an iPhone guy. Um, do they offer parental controls? For... I'm an iPhone guy, but I haven't even looked at that. Hasn't been an option in our house. You're, so you're, you're, yeah. you're years off. I'm right. not even there yet. But, so, but like yeah. we, and some people say it's too soon, but we went for middle school is kind of that age that you need the phone because their middle school is in the next town over from us. Okay. When like did you it, get your first cell phone? When did I personally get mine? Yours. 
Yep. Uh, when I got married. So 2000. So when you got married, I think it maybe maybe it was before then. It, okay. It may it may have been before. I got Pre- mine during the uh, during our engagement because she needed to get a hold of me to okay yeah. wedding plans. I think that may have been when I got mine. So and that's you know, when I got mine. Yep. It would have been like ninety nine. Yeah. I got, I got mine then two thousand five. Ah, wow. Yeah. I had mine in two thousand five. That's the my first wife time had, I had my, my wife had one self. when we met. Like she? like she had one when we met. It was like the the big brick, like your wife. It was Krista had the Zach Morris phone. Mm, not quite. If I don't, I'd have to remember what the Zach Morris phone looked like. But really? it was the it was like, it it was, was like the yeah. Oh, it, it was, was no, it wasn't like the full phone. It was oh, okay, it was still okay. smaller. It was like you could, but it had like the antenna that had to be brought oh, up pull up pull up the antenna yeah the, the flip um yeah. just a green screen with numbers on it this was before texting existed oh yeah and i her, remember texting yep her parents got it for her and there was she only had 15 minutes a month on the plan yes i remember that and it was purely for emergencies because yep. Yep. she went because she went to college you know yeah half a, half a state away and they were very worried about that yeah she, it back she went to back- you're right. She went Back to a public the- college. She didn't go to the Christian college that they wanted her to go to. Um, but it was the public college, half a state away. And so they they made sure that she had uh, half a state home. away. For, yeah, she was up in Manitowoc, just south of Green Bay to Whitewater. So it's, it's not half a state. Eh, it was it, you know, from Green Bay to to Whitewater, it's pretty it's good. A two hour drive. drive. Yeah, I wouldn't put it two and a half. Maybe regardless, <laughs> yeah. regardless, regardless, doesn't matter. Yes. I'm getting it caught was, up in a detail that doesn't matter. You are. Yes. It was certainly far enough away that overprotective parents were like, holy shit, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. It's just when you said half a state, I was I was like, okay, so she's in the family. She grew up in Minnesota or Iowa. Like that's what I no, like okay. Stevens point would have been half state away. But okay. anyway, um the so that was her first phone, and which we had forever, and then we eventually like as a as a couple, yeah, we upgraded. I remember, I think we got them from a Radio Shack because they were doing plans yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah. Back in the in, the, you're right. In the beginning, it was like it would minutes. It was like you were a secret agent, and you could only pull out the satellite phone when you need. Yeah, to get called. Absolutely. Command. Yeah, that was the only time you had to figure it out. And, and, and I, for the longest time, phones were getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Yes, and smaller. I remember yes. I had this little slider phone, that the Razor. Like, no, I don't know the what it was ra- called. I remember when the razor came out, everybody made a big deal out of it. I thought it sucked. <laughs> it was this like little slider phone. And I was like, oh, it's so tiny. Just little little slider. Yeah, they got to like this big. Yeah. And, and they would and it would then, like it would like like you push it out and it would expand yeah, to this. It was big it was a slider and then yeah. that I remember it fell and out. And then turned pocket. into these guys. And yeah, then, and that and all of a sudden it's like, oh wait. We can yeah. watch movies on our my phone. grandfather. Still, we has need a the, we need a bigger screen. Phone. He still has the. Flip oh, phone. I think my I think my dad went back to a flip phone. Yeah, maybe. remember for a while they had on commercials the jitterbug. No, the jitterbug was made for the elderly, where they had big buttons and a big screen. Oh, geez, very really? simple. It was like <clears throat> they had like two calls. Like you knew the two people to call, yeah. and I think one was an emergency. Right. Yeah. It was called the jitterbug, and it was like. It was a flip phone. It was very easy to work, no problems. And uh, I was saying, like, I'm going to get a jitterbug when I'm like 80 and screw all you Maybe. guys. I remember being but, on the dude, back then, not in the 80s, it's going to be a contact. It's be something oh, yeah. you put in your eye and go, yeah. 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 I, I remember being on the search for the phone from the Matrix, the, the where you oh, push a button and it, yeah, the and spring it shot loaded. up. Did yeah. it spring down or up? I thought it was down. I, was like, I think you're right. You go like this, and it would go. Tch. And you I was made that searching. Th- it was made. Sp- it was made special for special the show. for that. That's right. And I was like, "What?" And so I got the slider phone, which was the closest thing I could get, because what they did is essentially took a slider phone and put a spring in it so that it would. Why do you think they never did that? I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, that would have that would have made a ton of. Pretty like, sure it was so bad. Pretty sure it was Nokia on that film, and they probably just went, "Eh, we're not gonna put the money into developing that." Wow. Because the first Matrix film, no one knew what it was going to be. You're right. So You're right. You're right. <clears throat> yeah. Speaking of Keanu, that's kind of like Keanu. 
It is. Did you yeah. see that thing I sent you about uh about what people thought of the stunt coordinators of John yeah. Wick, what they thought yeah, of I, him? It, it was not shocking because one, I think I knew all that already, but Keanu Reeves is a machine. I mean, and he's he's in his 50s. I, I think believe. he's 60 now. Is man. he 60? I think he is. I think he is. He's one of my favorite actors. Him, Chris Pratt. Um I admire really? David Chris, Boreanaz. <laughs> Chris Pratt is one of your favorite actors? Yeah, I, I like... I, no, but I, what I mean by that is he's one of... The, okay, what I mean by favorite actors is he's a guy that um, that is as cool and as real off-screen as he is on-screen. I really appreciate that about act. Like, can you really tell me that Keanu Reeves is a great actor? He's not. He's No, a, he's not a great actor. He's a great right. man. Like, yeah. in, in the idea, like you've got a he's never had a scandal he's never right that's what i'm saying and he is always giving back constantly like yes. if you try to talk to him about his charities he doesn't want to talk about them because he doesn't like the attention he doesn't want attention right or his work with his charities yeah. yes. but when you look when someone digs in they're like this guy's given like millions upon millions of dollars away yeah he also has a very sad story. We, I think we've gushed. We've about covered Keanu. this, yeah, it's... yeah. But I was uh, so so. What we're talking about, guys, is on John Wick he, when he had to learn like all of these different types of martial arts. He'd like do it for a day, and then he'd come back the next day, and all these stunt coordinators thinking the movie star. I have to reteach what we just did. Mm-hmm. And he already knew it. Like they said, he like he had a photographic memory when it came to it. Or a yeah, he's <clears throat> he's very good at picking up like the physicality of a role. Yes, and lear- yeah. learning the moves. But then he he does like competitive shooting. Like, yes, he broke a was it, scoring record. Or like, he oh, did sorry, like shooting it, record. It was something that I think he picked up when he did Speed, the movie Speed. Okay, and, and doing that firearms training, he's like, oh, I've I've got a knack for this. Yeah. And they went, well, this is a sport. You can do sport shooting. Yeah. And so there's videos of him going through. It's not for a film. It's just him training of he's got like so many different guns or they've got them on tables. Yeah. He's like, go to point A, shoot these guys, go to point B, shoot these guys. And it's yeah. just go, 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 go. Have you ever done that? No. Do you ever want to? Looks like fun. Yeah, it looks like fun. Do, do you feel you could... When it comes to those guns laying down, and this is where your brother's probably gearing in now. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, do you ever, uh, where they have the guns laying down, do you feel yeah. you could pick up, boom, 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 drop it, pick up, boom, 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 drop it? Like, Not at all. Me, me neither. Like when I first learned how to shoot, like, because, <clears throat> you know, a couple of weeks back, and now I watch somebody effort, effortlessly do that. I'm like, Wow, that's a lot of practice. That that is, yeah. I think it's like any other martial art. It is hours and hours of repetition. Yeah, because when that, I remember when I picked up the gun, right? I was yeah. like, I was like this. I was like, okay, all right. Let's not put this off. Let's not shoot this. Yeah. Let's let's be good on this. Let's get. Yeah. You know, and they're going boom, 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 just like you know. And I was like, I'm just now that I'm act- I've actually done it. It's like when you see somebody proficiently do it, you're like, mm-hmm. whoa, okay. You know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. You know, so we, my son just asked me, I don't know what we were watching, but someone grabs a machine gun, like yes. not a, not an assault rifle, but like, a, like a, I want to say an Uzi because it wasn't an Uzi, but something like that. Right. Points it out in front of him, pulls the trigger and then goes, and like his arm rises up. He's like, oh no, I gotta. I, I'm like, yeah, you you can't one hand those. You gotta, you've gotta be locked in. You've gotta have two hands on it. You've gotta. If you're an expert, can is that it doesn't I, matter. I don't, I don't know. I want to say no. Like I think it's. I want to say that's one of those things that Hollywood has lied to us about for decades. Is okay. that some guns don't need two hands, right? They do. Or, you know the the cool awesome shot where the guy takes the huge shotgun he just goes like this yeah you know, like, goes like like that boom right i've and you, you can can't see, do that no matter how well you're trained right i don't think with like a regular actual shell that you're going to 
make functional, like you're hunting or whatever. Right. Or if because, you can do it, you probably won't be accurate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those 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 Hollywood shots of someone with a shotgun that's yes. like one, or like the rock in the rundown when he's got yes. two, sh- two shotguns that he's like, you know, locking in with his, yeah, his really other like, arm. Sh- and like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, I don't I don't think you can do that because of the there's so much kick in there. Yes. So when they're doing it in the films, like the the blanks that they're using don't, don't have, have that much of a kick. Don't have the amount of powder in there to give it that actual functional kick. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's that's what I think. And that's what I the few prop guys that I've listened to on podcasts and stuff have alluded to that mm-hmm. but i can't i can't point to any one podcast and go so and so said this on episode seven right yeah uh, i can't do that um you'd be annoying if you could well and, and that's why i'm thinking like <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like enjoy, as i'm talking i'm like did i really hear this or is it, this just me thinking i heard this and wanting to sound knowledgeable i'm not I'm yeah sure. but yeah the guns that I've shot, like in, including the shotguns and the rifles and, and things like that right. that I've shot, if anybody tries in my presence to one hand a shotgun like that, I want to get far away from that guy. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that's a smart move. I uh, I I I appreciate that they're starting to really do it the correct way lately in movies. Mm-hmm. You see, like John Wick does it pretty well, right? Like he doesn't. They do, uh, especially with the Alec Baldwin incident um, where, yeah. you know, there's no, I don't mean like in terms of accidentally shooting somebody. I mean, in terms of the proper way you hold it, the way oh, you go around a room, yes. the way you hold it yes. in, the way you, That's, you know, he, he's doing all that in a very live, like you'll see a lot of times where he's holding it like yeah. close to his Just chest. Like and, he's doing this. He's like he's, around, yeah. he's going around the corners. Yeah. And, and I, I remember I asked my brother that one time, I'm like, wait, what? Why is he not out here? It's like if you're coming around the corner and the first thing you're going to put out is your hand in that corner is your yeah. hand with a gun. Yeah. If there's a bad guy there, he's going to hit your hand or he's going to take your gun. That's why you go and keep it here. And that's where I mean, so that's just he's doing real training like he's been trained by right. weapons experts and they're like, no, this is how you would really do it. Yeah. And so that's what I've yeah. So that's what I've noticed about the recent movies. I think it kind of. St- Maybe it started with John. I don't know when it actually started, but I felt like I started seeing the way that you properly move. And now when they do a SEAL movie like The Terminalist, they were very on like, this is how you're yeah. going to shoot a gun. You're not going to shoot a gun any other way, but this way or like, it's we no don't longer, do it like this. Yes. It's no longer like 80s action style. Yeah. Or, or like, what is it? John Woo? Yeah. A little bit of the John Woo with the gun, with the gun. The gun fu kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great for the time, but like yes. any, and maybe we're just more educated as a society in, in terms of useless things that we know that somebody's yeah. going, that's not how that would happen. Right. Yeah. So that's it, man. We've already hit an hour. Wow. Yeah. That was it. We didn't, I don't feel like we talked about a lot, but we talked about enough, evidently. So, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that working from home, has been a little bit tough on me, <laughs> but I found ways around it. Right. And what I'm trying to let everybody know is don't look at your phone down this way. And nobody throws a loaded gun. <laughs> no, nobody throws a loaded gun. So, uh, all right, man, do your thing so I can do my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's the week and we're we're getting like sun is setting after like close to six o'clock yeah, yeah, in the yes. upper midwest it's it's getting, getting lighter happy. out getting happy and things are getting happy people are going outside we're going to hit another cold snap here i know this week but it's it spring's coming and people yeah. are going to be coming outside you're going to see more people again and just remember when you're seeing people don't be a douche there you go for the greg this is johnny saying have a great week take care everybody thanks for watching podcast out have a good one